Hello and thank you for watching the 8th lesson of chapter 10, which is 10.8, Lab, Configure IPv6 Addresses on Network Devices. Now we've done with our theory, all chapter 10 theory is done, but it wasn't just theory, we did some practical work, we looked at the Wireshark, we configured some IPv6 addresses on the routers, interesting topics that we have covered, lots of lots of interesting topics. And you should be a lot more comfortable now with IPv6 and you should be able to tell the differences and not just the differences, but the enhancements IPv6 brings over IPv4. So really, you should fall in love with IPv6 like I do. <laughs> like everything else with IPv6, when you first look at it, you think, oh my god, this is going to be difficult. Now, well, this lab looks like uh, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing, but pretty much it's going to be lots of configuration and verification. The first thing that we need to do, we need to create a subnet. <laughs> and that, you saw how easy it is to create the subnets. We need to create five subnets and using the root prefix 2001 db8acad colon colon forward slash 48. So our prefix is 48. And then we take those addresses and we apply them on the routers and on end devices. Not on PCB because I want to show you, I want to run Wireshark on PCB and monitor router solicitation and router advertising messages on that PC. We're going to verify the global unicast address and link local extended unique identifier 64 addresses on the routers. Now the routers will assign themselves um, dynamically link local addresses. We don't want to do that because that's going to be our gateway for the PCs. We're going to assign a link local addresses manually. And we're going to verify what multicast groups do the router join by default. We'll see what multicast assigned and solicited groups, which we learned in multicast area. Obviously, we're going to monitor our PCB and then configure PCs with IPv6, IPv6 global unicast address manually. Because PCs are going to get the IPv6 dynamically anyway, so we don't have to do anything. We're going to verify that, but we're going to configure it manually. We're going to verify the global unicast address and link local addresses. Um, well, that's not in EUI64. That's just random generated addresses on the PC. We're going to configure PCB to generate extended unique identifier and we'll see that when PC is actually using the MAC address and the routers to generate extended unique identifier 64 and then we're going to verify connectivity in there I'm going to actually do some um, static routing commands um, again static routing is not part of the semester one we're going to cover static routing on semester two but you'll see the commands the IPv6 static routing commands I'm going to do now this is the lab topology that I will be using to demonstrate to how to configure IPv6 and apply it on the devices. And I'm going to actually just use the routers, uh, router 1, 2, and 3, not the switches, PC, A, B, and C. So this is the lab topology. And we do need to create five subnets. So we need the subnet, for example, for uh, router 1, FA00, connected to PC, A. We need another subnet for FA01, connected to PC, B. We need a subnet on router 3 and FA00, connected to PC, C. And we need a subnet between router 1 and 2. We need another subnet between router 2 and 3. So in total, we're going to need five subnets. And uh, I'm going to use a notepad, but we really, we could, I could do this subnet in just on the screen as there as you see it. So you can tell the root prefix that they've given us. The root prefix, what we've chosen, is this. That's our root prefix. So all the devices, they're going to have the same root prefix. And then we just take that and configure our subnets. So the root prefix is 2001 DB8 ACAD and then that's it forward slash 48. That's our root prefix. So we're going to take this root prefix and create our own, our own subnet. So for example the first subnet we can create will be 000, all zeros. And I don't, I can remove the leading zeros and continue zeros but just for demonstration I'm showing you forward slash 64 that's our first subnet. Then the second subnet, all I need to do is increment the subnet hex set. For example, it will be one, subnet two, subnet three here, subnet four. <laughs> That's how easy it is to create subnets on IPv6. That's it. And then I, would, I could use a subnet one and give the IP addresses. But anyway, because this is uh, PCA here, I'm going to need a subnet A. It's, uh, you can have subnet all subnets all up to FFF. You can choose whatever you want. So I'm going to choose subnet A for PC where PCA is connected, and uh, where PCB is connected, I can choose subnet B, right? So this will be subnet B, 
uh, where the PCC is connected, I'm going to choose subnet C. So that's it, subnet C here. And then between router 1 and 2, I'm going to pick that subnet as subnet 12, for example. And the subnet between router 2 and 3, I'm going to pick the subnet 23. There you go. I don't even need this extra subnet. That's my already subnet in done. <laughs> Very nice and easy. So just going to apply this now. to So fast Ethernet 00 on the router 1, for example, that's going to be subnet A. So I can write subnet A there and remove these question marks. And um, the PCA has to have the same subnet, yeah? So it has to be on the subnet A. And you can see the interface ID I'll already have it there. So router is going to get 1, PC is going to get 2. And then fast Ethernet 0, 1, where the PCB is connected, I'm going to choose that subnet B. So I'm going to remove these um, question marks and put B. And same, the PCB is going to have on the subnet B. And then on router 3, Fast Ethernet 00, that's going to have subnet C. That's the, how easy it is to do subnet in on IPv6. And PCC is going to be on subnet C. There we go. And then uh, between router 1 and 2, subnet 12. So I'm going to put subnet 1, 2. Yeah? It's an hexadecimal. So um, let's put 12 there. Get rid of this. And then uh, router 2 has to share the same subnet, so I'll put 12 there. And then router 2 and, three, router two and 3, I'll put the subnet 23. So 23 there. There, and 23 on router 3. You can see now the IP addresses, the interface ID 1 here for router 1, 2 for router 2, 23 for router 2 um, in the other side, and 23 on router 3, a colon colon 3 is our interface ID. Okay, so I have actually a connection to my routers. So I've got a connection to router one. And um, you can see it's brand new. I just haven't done any configuration, router two and router three. As well as I've got a connection to PCA, B and C. So if I go to, um, this is my PCA, PCB and PCC. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna write down the configuration, the startup configuration, brand new from beginning and um, then you get to see it. So in the notepad, if I just move this to here, and let me just make the fonts a little bit less smaller so it can fit nicely. Um, 16 should be fine. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is a basic startup config, startup config, and I wanna do this quite fast because I don't want to do um, take too long for this. So all routers will have this. And uh, we do, for example, uh, we have to do enable and configure terminal. And then we have to give it a name. So hostname r1 for router1. No IP domain uh, lookup. lookup. And then uh, service uh, password encryption. 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 And then uh, enable secret class. And then we're going to do a banner message of the day and then we start with authorized uh, users only because I usually do this in the back uh, background but um, sometimes we know when I was learning I didn't I, I wanted to see everything you know so I was like oh why is he doing something in the background and that's why I'm doing <laughs> everything uh, uh, everything you can see so login sync and exact timeout not to log us out ever and then we do the, for the VTY 0, 0 to 4, password uh, Cisco, and we do login, and we do again login with two Gs, sync, and then here we need to do um, recommended, which is three minutes and 30 seconds. That's a recommended timeout for the VTY lines. For the console, never lock us out. And then we have to do end and copy running config to startup config. Start, um, stop config. I'm not going to um, actually do that. Just let me just copy this. And first, let's check that there is no any errors. So I'll copy this. I'll go to my router one, uh, press enter here and just paste it. Yep. Everything seems to be fine. There is no errors here. Done. I'll just change the name here for router one to go to router two. And I'll copy that to router two. I'll save them later. Yeah. So I'll go to router two. And just 
paste it there so right click just right click and it will paste it and then I'll copy I'll change this to name to root of three and I'll copy this to root of three I'll uh, from here copy I'll go to root of three and I'll just paste it there there we go no errors startup configuration all three routers is done now I like to use notepad because it speeds up things right it does we can do it really fast I can do it one by one but in the notepad kind of like you can work out really fast so we have created uh, subnets yeah so for example if I go to this is for router one configuration and I need to access uh, fast Ethernet 00 which is this interface here fast Ethernet 00 and um, do description description or one to um, to uh, la uh, PCA PCA let's say PCA and then IPv6 address uh, 2001 DB8 ACAD for example and there was a colon colon one forward slash 64 that's it and do not shut down and then I need to just what I do is to speed up just copy this right and put it underneath now change the fast Ethernet from FA00 to fast Ethernet01 change the description from router 1 to PCA I'll say router 1 to PCB and then the the just change the subnet mask uh, sorry subnet ID from A to B and we're done see in the IPv uh, in the hexadecimal you can write lowercase uppercase it doesn't really matter and then I'll do the same I'll paste it again and now instead of saying uh, fast Ethernet 00 I'll change it to serial 1 forward slash 0 so serial 1 forward slash 0 and description for this is router 1 to router 2 router 2 and then just change the subnet ID from 12 I'll just from A I put 12 that's it done <laughs> so I can just copy this to router 1 and see that okay so I'll just paste this there we go we have all the three interfaces configured now and it's saying the status is up and uh, layer 2 is up as well there's no problem now to configure for example router 3 I don't need to write it again I can just copy all this right copy just write it underneath paste it underneath so now I look I have two so I'll change the name from router 1 this is router 3 stuff so I'll just move this to this side a little bit and in router 3 I have interface FA00 which is this interface here but from router 1 to PCA I'll change that from router 3 to PCC as description and then uh, the subnet ID is it was A so I need to change this to C and the uh, IP address is the same it's okay router 3 doesn't have fast Ethernet so I can delete this but router 3 has serial you can see the serial 11 not serial 10 so I need to change this to 11 and description is going to be from router 3 to router 2 and again I need to only change the subnet ID so I'll change it this to 23 sorry 23 and then the interface ID is 3 in the end there we go 3 copy this to router 3 and it should be done that is router 3 now and for router 2 I can just do the same thing just copy and paste yeah so <laughs> so um, I'll copy router 3's I'll just go a bit further down and later on you can see you can save all this notepad for for example if there's a mistake you can always come back and have a look so router 2 does not have an interface FA00 so get rid of that but it has interface S11 right and description this is going to be router 2 to router 3 the subnet is the same so that's fine but the, the interface ID is different so 2 not shut down that's fine and here I'm gonna there's another interface serial one zero and this is from root to three to root to one sorry root to one and the subnet ID is not 23 but it's 12 there we go that's done root to two is done so I'll copy this to root to two as well okay so now once we finish this root to two should be able to ping root to three and root to one yeah so if I say 
ping for example 2001 db8 acad uh, router 12 network 12 or in prefix 12 and router 1 i can ping that uh, prefix 23 that's router 2 and 3 and 3 i can ping that so that's fine to verify for example um, we need the next thing we need to do so if i if we go here what we have to do is verify global unique address and link local address eui64 addresses on the routers so i'll go to router 1 so if i access router 1 here and i need to verify global unique address so i need to go end here and then show ipv6 interface brief now you remember when we did the ipv4 we just type show ip interface brief but in ipv6 the commands they the configuration and monitoring commands are very similar you just need to put v6 instead of just ip so ipv6 interface brief and you can see now i have uh, 2001 db8 acad a quote unquote one for fast ethernet 00 2001 db8 acad b quote unquote one for fast ethernet 01 which is this one here and 2001 db8 acad 12 quote unquote one for serial 10 there we go perfect the configuration and you can see the link local address so let's have a look at this fast ethernet 00 um let's let's choose a different one because we took a look we looked at this in the lesson. Let's pick up fast Ethernet 01, for example. That's not my link local address, and I'm going to put this in the notepad, right? So let me put that's the address. Now, this address has been derived from the MAC address. So if I look at the MAC address, for example, just move this bit up so I can see the MAC address of interface FA01. So FA01, and the MAC address is that. That's my MAC address. So what the router has done has used the MAC address to come up to the link local EUI64 address. So the first thing they did, the router, has split this MAC address, so if I copy this, has split this MAC address into two, right? Right there in the middle. Boom. The reason is because the MAC address is 48 bits and it needs to create 64 bits. So um, the MAC address, for example, this is 48 bits. And it needs the interface ID has to be 64 bits, 64 bits. So we really don't have 16 bits. We are we are have minus 16 bits. So for that reason, they will put FFFE in the middle to make the 16 bits. So if we put FFFFE in the middle, and you can see we can see it here, FFFE in the middle, just to create that extra 16 bits. And then on top of it, right? So we do one more thing. Let's move this bit so we can see it better. Um, the seventh bit here, for example, the CA, we need to convert this into binary. So C is 12, yeah? So to convert 12 into binary will be 1100. Zero, zero. That's C. And A is 10. So that will be 1010. Zero, zero. And we need to locate the seventh bit. So for example, the seventh bit here is uh, one two three four five six seven this bit and it's one we need to flip it to zero we make it zero and that says that we have created EUI 64 so for example when we flip that to zero that becomes like this so one one zero zero one zero 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 so that will be uh, say C again still but now that will be eight so for that reason you have here C eight it was C A here was CA, but now it's C8, because the seventh bit is being flipped. And then we have a 0, 01, 0, 01, and 0, 08. But here we have 8, because it's compressed, yeah? So that would be 0, zero 08. And then we have a FFFE in the middle. So there we go. And then we have a 4C. You can see that 4C. And then just 6. But this is compressed, leading zeros being removed. So that's actually the address. So instead of CA, it's C8. Then 0108 FFFE 4C0006. This is how the address, like the router, will use his MAC address to come up to the link local address. Okay, so we verify the link local address coming up from the MAC address, and to verify your configuration, show IPv6 interface brief.
right? We can see that FA01, 00, 01, and 10. Okay. Very quickly now, we don't want to stay too long doing this. Um, the next, uh, the next thing we had to do was um, configure IPv6 LLA addresses manually. So instead of do doing link local addresses like that UI64, we want to configure them manually because we can't re we can't remember this. This is too hard to remember. So instead of having that, we can say okay for router one. All the interfaces, so interface FA00 is going to have same link local address. We say FE80, quote unquote, one. And then we have to say that it's link local address, local. Now, this address is going to be the same for all the interfaces. The reason why we can have the same on all the interfaces is because it doesn't, it doesn't move from one network to another network. It's not routable. So I can configure that same on all the interfaces. I can do the router 2 now, router 2, um, so let me just copy this for router 2, and router 2 is 2, because they can't have the same, this one can't be the same as this, right, so I need to configure on the other interface, which is serial 1 and 1, and then I'll need to configure router 3, so I'll do router 3 here. Router 3 has got one interface, false ethernet 0, 0, and I'll create this as a 3, and serial 1, 1, serial one one sorry which is i'll create this three it has to be unique on the local network there we go so i'll copy this for uh router a router one i should say this inform this is uh link local so manually and i'll go to router one config t first so configure terminal to go to global and there we go and uh, this I'll configure, copy to router 2, so copy, go to router 2, again I need to go to configuration mode, and then I need to do the router 3, there we go, okay, it's all done. Now we have a manual link local address, and I know it's easier to me to identify the link local address for the routers rather than the uh, EUI64 for example. So if I go to say router 1 here and to verify it now again show IPv6 interface brief. There we go. You can see FE80 for all of the interfaces and that will be the gateway now for my PCs. So once I configure the PCs that will be the gateway. Now we need to verify the next step was to verify multicast groups on the routers. So, for example, I need to go to the router one, and then um, let's just go to now router three, or router one. So router one, and then I'll do show IPv6 interface interface uh, fast Ethernet zero zero. And now you can see, for example, the router one has got uh, on fast Ethernet zero zero. That's the global unicast address. That's the link local address. It says here link local address FE80 manually configured. We can see the prefix of the, uh, G00 or F00 and then prefix length as well. And we can see the router has joined a group, a multicast group FF02 quote unquote 1. Now this group is all nodes. All nodes. So anything, all nodes, doesn't matter. As soon as you enable in IPv6, it's going to join in this group. For the routers to join, there's another group for the routers, which is FF02, we said FF02, colon, colon, 2. But this router has not joined to that group. Why? The reason is because the IPv6, IPv6 unicast routing has to be enabled. So you need to, you need to make that command. Once we do that command, we'll see the FA02, colon colon 2. So let's do that. Yeah. So let's go there and enable IPv6 uh, unicast routing, which is a global command. So IPv6 unicast routing. We need to enable that. Once we enable that, uh, once we enable that, I need to say uh, show uh, IPv6 interface FA00. And now, now you can see, um, I can't, let me just try and fitted where I did marking 
<laughs> you can see FAZ, FF02 colon colon one, that's your old nodes, it's still there. But now you can see the new group because the router, I did the unicast routing. So FF02 colon colon two, this is uh, all routers, all routers, all routers. And then another solicited node address that we have here is FF02 colon colon one FF001. Now this is a uh, 104 prefix for solicited node. And this gets used, for example, address resolution and for de uh, de um, duplicate address detection. For example, you see duplicate address detection to make sure that there is not same IPv6 address on every device. Now, for example, make sure there is not duplicate address. We can't have a duplicate address. And um, let's do the same for router 2. So um, I can just do it here. What I can say exit IPv6 unicast tab routing. And then I will do the same for IP for router 3. So IPv6 unicast. When I do it here, the tab doesn't work. Only when you're in the correct mode, the tab works. So here I need to write. Or if it's enough characters, and just press enter. OK. And now the PC is actually um, saying there is new networks. OK, so here I can see it again. Show IPv6. Let's look at the multi groups. So interface FA00. And you can see has got multi group for FA02 colon colon 1, FA02 colon colon 2. That is the multi group for your, um, uh, for that is for uh, the global unicast address. See with 1 in the end, that's the global unicast address. And 3 is for the link local address. So you're going to have a solicited node for every address that you have on your router. The next thing what we have to do. It's monitor router solicitation and router advertising on PCB. So we haven't not configured PCs with IPv6 addresses, and that's what we're going to do there. So if I go to the PC, if I right click here and say open network and sharing center, and uh, here you can go through the control panel, but this is easier. Um, click on IPv6 and then go to properties. And you can see the IPv6, does this PC have an IPv6? Well, since it's enabled, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So if I do IP config, I will see an IPv6 address 2001 DB8 ACAD subnet A. So this is manually, this is dynamically IPv6. This is using Slack, if you remember, stateless address auto configuration, where the PC, the PC has asked, oh, do I, what's the prefix? The router said, okay, well, that's your prefix. That's a prefix up to A and prefix length is 64 and you will have to generate this. And the PC has gone as just randomized generated as well as he's got his own link local address. Randomized. So PCs will have an IPv6 address if they are enabled for IPv6. That means that they all they will create a global unique address themselves without the help of the DHCP server. So this address here they has is a globally unique address. Here, it's got one temporary, but it's got a new one as well. There. Now, what we want to do, we want to actually give configure a static IP address for this PC. So, to do a static, you configure it here, and then you type 2001 DB8 ACAD, and this is subnet A, and then the address we set two. So, if you look at the um, lab, so if I go and show you the lab, A colon colon two, right? So, and the gateway, well, 64 is a prefix, and the gateway is gonna be the link local. So FE80, colon colon one. Instead of me putting in the long gate FE network, it's that's why it's better to configure it manually. Okay, done that. It says, do you wanna restart the computer? Just say yes. And then I will go to PCC, and I'll configure the IP address of PCC. I wanna leave PCB later so we can monitor in the Wireshark. Um, so 2001 DB8 ACAD C colon colon two. That's going to be the address of PCC. So I'll go to PCC and um, just right click, open the adapter settings, and then I click on there. It's not even enabled, so I just need to enable it first. Click OK. That's enabling it, and then I go to properties again and um, 
then I'll give an IP address. It's already have an IP address, so from previous lessons probably. 2001 DB8 ACAD, and this was C colon colon 2. This was the address, yeah? So let's have a look. DB8 ACAD C2, that's right. It's not 68, it's 64. So somehow I probably have demonstrated that you can you can subnet on the like an IPv4 borrowing bits and stuff. And again here will be a link local address. So FE83, that's my router three. And there you go. That's how nice it is to configure IPv6 in there. Okay. The next thing we had to do, we had to um, well, we looked at the multicast group. We configured the PCs with a, a global unique address manually. And uh, we verified. We're going to verify. But let's monitor router solicitation and router advertisement on the Wireshark. Yeah? So I'm going to go to PCB. Let's go to PCB. And see if the IPv6 is enabled. And if it's not enabled, that's good. Because then we can monitor with the Wireshark. It's enabled. Okay. Let me disable it. And I need to restart. So restart this. So we can see it on the Wireshark router solicitation and router advertisement. Because router solicitation messages will happen once. Router advertisement message will happen every 200 seconds. So we can wait about three minutes and a half. We can see router advertisement. OK. Now PCA has already got an IPv6 address. So if I go there and monitor, well, verify it, so IP config. And you can see that's the address that I given. Two. Two thousand one DB eight ACAD A colon colon two. These are gonna be temporary, they're gonna be removed. But this is the address that we actually use in. And um, I'm gonna test that I can ping the router one, so DB eight ACAD for example A and colon colon one. That's my router one. And I can ping it, that's great. Okay. Now, if I go to PCB again, and what we want to do is here, I want to load, uh, well, start the Wireshark. So we can see the uh, PC sending router solicitation message and router advertising message. So I'll start the capture on the one interface that I have here. So I'll start there. And uh, then I'll go and enable IPv6. So I'll try here, right click, enable IPv6. And OK, that's all I do. So I close this and you can see in the background there's quite a few already IPv6 messages. And you know that we talked about ICMPv6 has been improved and there's a lot of IP, ICMPv6 messages. It's a very useful protocol. Neighbor solicitation, neighbor uh, solicitation, neighbor, uh, neighbor advertisement and so on. I'm going to stop the capture so we're going to see it. What I'm actually looking for is a router solicitation. See, router solicitation, and then router advertisement. Router solicitation, remember the message is that the PC doesn't have an IP address and is asking the router, send me advertisement to see how do I get an IPv6 address? How do I get an IPv6 address? Do I ask the ACB server? Do I assign it myself? That's a router solicitation. And we already have a router advertisement from FE80, quote unquote, on one, which means from that PC to the all nodes, right? And from this router solicitation comes from this PC with this link local address to all routers. You see FF02 colon colon 2. That's the, let me just mark it here, yeah. So it's coming, it's coming from this link local self-generated to all routers. It's saying router solicitation. Tell me how do I configure myself. Then this is coming from the router 1 which is FE80, colon, colon, one, and it's sent into all PCs, FF02, colon, colon, one. That is router advertisement. And it says, here is how you configure it. And let's have a look at that. What's in that router advertisement? So if I just move this, so I'm going to go select router, so, uh, router advertisement and um, just move this. And you can see in the internet control, message protocol V6, the flags, so first flag, remember we were talking about the managed and other flag. You can see the managed flag is set to zero. And the other flag is set to zero. If the M is zero and uh, the O equals zero, then what was that? That was slack, remember, yeah? S stateless address auto configuration, which means you do it yourself. If uh, the M is zero 
and then we said oh it's one that means it's slack again but with DHCP and then if M is set to one then is the DHCP v6 DHCP DHCP v6 so that if the M is set if the manager is set to one then it's DHCP but no this time it's zero so it means it's router is telling the PC you have to configure it yourself right <laughs> IPv6 address what else is the information other information that we really need to know is the prefix and the prefix length so it's tell, telling us that's our prefix length and that's our prefix that's our network 2001 db8 ac that's that's a pcb yeah and the prefix length 64. so now the pcb has generated his own address he said okay well i'm going to use that prefix and that prefix length and i'm going to generate my own ipv6 address so if i say ip config you can see it has generated with that prefix and that's address there okay the temporary it's gonna go yeah so we looked at the we monitored in the wireshark how we get router advertisement and router solicitation and now we have configured my pcs with ipv6 global unique address that i've done we verified it and to verify it we just need to go to pc and we say ip config that's very fine we get ipv6 address that's a temporary yeah these ones are going to go they're going to be removed and then we have already a link local address but you see in the pc and the windows the link local address is not extended unique identifier they are not using that process it's just random the pc since windows vista they used microsoft operating system since, since windows vista they just randomized this we can actually make this uh, not to randomize it so we can we can uh, open the command prompt in the as an administrator so the command will be is net shell command so net shell interface interface uh, ipv6 so i don't want to do a spelling mistake set uh, global global random mice identifier equals disabled okay so now instead of just randomizing this ipv6 uh, interface id the pc is actually going to do um, eui64 so you will see the ff in the middle ffe in the middle so ff fe in the middle okay let's see it so ip config now you can see it's using eui64 that's why we see ff fe in the middle so it's using his MAC address to come up with this 64 bit here. Uh, we can work it out if you want, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't mind. I've got so much time here. So let me open the notepad and um, I'm going to copy this. I can, we already did this. Yeah. So you can stop it if, or fast forward it if you're tired. But anyway, that's why I get excited about these. Um, so we got this address, right? And we, the PC has got this address from his own MAC address. So if I do config all, for example, and I'm just going to copy the MAC address, the physical address. So that physical address is here, right? So the PC, what is done is use his own MAC address to come up to that address. How he did it by using this MAC address and splitting it into two, right? And in the middle to make up the numbers, put FFFE. So you can see that he's put it there in the middle. And that's already, you can see that's already the same, yeah? FFFE 01421, uh, 4A21 is the same. So here, there's a little bit different. So instead of saying 02, it just says it remove the leading zero. So instead of saying 00, right? And then 0C29, 00, instead of saying 00, 0C29, you say it says 2. Because the 8 bit, if I convert those two zeros to 8 bits, the seventh bit is being flipped into one and so that's why it's become zero two zero cc and then remove this zero for leading zeros so that's why we don't have a randomized now we actually using our our own mac address to come up to the, the mac address you see same mac address eui64 extended unique identifier 64 right the last thing before we do before we wrap it up and i know it's a long video again 
these videos are coming long to verify connectivity on the network now connectivity on the network is not going to work if i don't have some kind of ip addressing right or static routing or something i need to enable static routing so for example i'm going to enable the default static route on p on router one it says ipv6 route for any network with any prefix length i'm just going to send it to router 2 which is 2001 db8 acad um, 12 colon colon 2 i'm going to send it to router 2 and i'm going to do same command well similar command on router 3 which says any network with any prefix i'm just going to send it to router 2 23 is the subnet id that's it and then on router 2 i need to do a bit more information not default but specific yeah so ipv6 root for example for this network 2001 db8 acada so 2001 db8 acad a quote unquote and forward slash 64 i'm going to send it to router 1 so db8 acad 12 quote unquote and 1 there we go so what i'm telling you is if router 2 to get to this network send it to router 1 and then i'll do the same for the next network so i'll say okay so I'll say to get to this network of router 1, so B, to get to B network, from router 2, just send it to router 1. And then to router 3, for example, to get to router 3's network, which is the C, uh, sorry, C, send it to router 3, which is 23.23. .23. Right, I'm going to copy these commands. That's for router 1. So I'll copy this to router 1. And um, let me just move this. So I'll config D and I'll paste this. Done. Then I'll do the, the next command to root to three. So this is going to root to three. Uh, config D and I'll put it to root to three. Done. And then I'll put the next command. Um, let me go to this next command. Well, three commands for root to two. Copy. I go to root to two. I'm in the global configuration mode, so I'll just paste them there. Done. If everything is done correctly, now PCA should be able to ping PCC. And PCB should be able to ping PCC and PCA. Every, everybody should be able to talk to everybody. Yeah. So if I go to PCA and I'll ping PCC uh, first. So I'll ping 2001, DB8, ACAD, and PCC's uh, subnet was C. And colon colon, let's have a look at the IP address. Two, right? So two. And I have a communication. Excellent. So from PCA, it's going all the way to PCC. And I can go to PCB. Let's ping PCA first. So ping 2001, DB8, ACAD, A, colon colon two. That's PCA. I'm pinging it fine. And ping PCC, which is C colon colon three. Oh, PCC is, is not working for some reason. Oh, there's a two. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm putting three there. I thought there's actually three, but it's two. Yeah, so sorry. Let's have a look. look. It's the IP address is two, not three. Okay. That's it. I can talk to PCC. And PCA, we just did it. PCA, that's two. And PCC, that's it. No, not three. Sorry. <laughs> uh, two. There we go. Okay, excellent. A um, lot of information here. We did all this lab, and I know it's taking a long time, but that's what you have to do when you learn. You have to stick with it, yeah? Thank you for watching lesson 10.8, lab, configure an IPv6 addresses on network devices. This is of chapter 10, IPv6 addressing. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye-bye.